Welcome to the Cover Letter Workshop, brought to you by Montana Department of Labor and Industry and Job Service Montana. In this training, we will cover everything that you need to know to write a stunning cover letter. Your cover letter is all about getting an employer to remember you out of all of the applicants and to get you to the next step, the interview. You'll get these results by strategically setting the stage, showing your own personal style and personality. You'll want to respond directly to the job posting by using keywords. And it'll help you to identify your own personal brand in your cover letter. A cover letter is just one piece of your job search efforts. In the resume trainings, we talked a little bit about making sure that your social media presence is positive, fine tuning a five minute pitch is recommended as well. This is your elevator speech, if you will. Consider what would you want to say if you happen to get an opportunity to ride an elevator with the hiring manager? What is it about you that they need to know so that they're intrigued enough to find out more? Although every job does not require a cover letter, if they welcome it, it is a must have. A cover letter is your opportunity to introduce yourself to the employer in a way that your resume cannot. It's your opportunity to sell yourself, to make them want to know more. Lastly, a cover letter is proof that you can create a professional document. It proves you're qualified and competent. When not to send a cover letter, if it's not invited, it could actually get you thrown out of the entire application process. If you're emailing a resume and only the resume is encouraged, you could certainly use the body of the email as a concise cover letter, if you will. If emailing a cover letter, you can skip a reference and enclosure line and change the wording to attached resume instead of enclosed. Otherwise, kind of use the same format. Let's get into the details. We'll start by identifying what should always be included in a cover letter. And then we'll cover business letter format. And we'll go over the cover letter section by section. Here's an example of a good cover letter. Make sure that your cover letter is never more than a page long. With the exception of some employers like the University of Montana, and a cover letter that includes supplemental questions that are specifically requested by the employer. In that case, length depends on the job and the number of questions. Your cover letter should be typed, never handwritten. You'll want to use business letter format and we'll cover in detail business letter format on the next slide. Your communication skills will be evidenced by the proof that is your cover letter. If you use text lingo, fail to use capitals or full sentences, your skills will show that you're not the professional that they're looking for. Make sure that you add information that isn't in your resume. We don't wanna simply regurgitate the resume and add information that they'll find interesting and make them want more information. It's true, employers are looking at much more than just a GPA and they get to see your work experience on the resume. This is the opportunity to introduce yourself. Your cover letter needs to be perfect, absolutely perfect. There's no excuses. There's a ton of resources available for free to be sure that you have it right. The spell check in Word is one option. Grammarly.com is free and it'll give you all kinds of tips, not just grammar and spelling. And don't forget to ask a trusted friend or a family member to read it over and give you some tips. Even just reading it out loud can help. 
Make sure that you add the business name and address, and if at all possible, add the name of the person in charge of hiring. You can always call and ask who that person is. If the posting doesn't list the name and you can't find out the name, you could go with something like Dear Hiring Manager or whatnot, but do not use To Whom It May Concern or Dear Sir or Madam. Just like the resume, you need to target the job that you want. The cover letter will not be run through ATS, Applicant Tracking Systems. Well, who knows, maybe in the near future. But it's important that they see the things that they're looking for in your letter. Put yourself in the employer's shoes. What things are the most important to them? And what about you fits those needs? Never use the same letter for every job. It's okay to tweak an existing letter, but read and reread it. You don't want to miss something big like, the ch like changing a company name. Lastly, make sure that you personally sign the letter. You'll want to print a salutation, leave four lines, and print your name. If you're handing in an electronic version, you can skip the signature part. This slide covers all the pieces we need to include in a business letter. It's best to use the same heading as the resume so they match and they look professional. The rest of the letter should be left justified. It's outdated to tab in on each paragraph and electronic documents don't need to have two spaces after the period anymore. Now only add your contact information at the top of the page if you're not using the same header as the resume. And then you should have an extra space and enter between each of the sections. There's no need to use your street or your mailing address if you're submitting digitally and it's optional either way. Street addresses can solicit prejudice, so think that through. If you're applying for a job out of state, consider entering your city and your state and then willing to relocate. Next is the current date, and we'll cover how to insert the date automatically and have Word update that when you open the document and resave it. The employer's information goes next. Include person's name, their title, the company name, street address, city, state, and zip. The greeting line should be professional and specific. You will include three well-designed paragraphs and we'll cover each. Length is subject to room and what you have to say, but three to five sentences each is a good goal. Next, you'll have your professional closing and don't forget the space to sign in person and type your name exactly as you sign. So if you include your middle initial, include your middle initial on the type version. We'll cover the specific formatting information on a business letter a little bit later. We'll go over each of these 10 components of a business letter section by section on the coming slides. The heading and the greeting will be the top third of your document. This includes your contact information in the header, the current date, their address, reference line, and greeting. We'll cover the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. And your letter will end with an assertive closing and your signature. We'll start with the heading and grading section, but there is a great handout that pairs really nicely with this information on all the sections. So check out the course page in the helpful document section. The document is titled Cover Letters Career Guide. You'll want to use the same header as your resume to match. You'll want to include your address. The city state is fine. You don't need the street address. If you're living out of state, consider adding willing to relocate. You might consider using the company's colors if you're in your header, if that's at all possible. 
Next, we'll insert the current date, and then the employer's address goes next. You'll want to include the person's name and job title if possible, the business name and address. If you're applying for a corporate job, use the local address and recipient information when possible. Add a professional salutation to someone specific. The greeting or salutation that you choose to use really does matter. On the screen, we have several common salutations and whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. Good morning, well, first of all, you have no idea what time of day it is when they read it, but it reads like junk mail, and so we just want to avoid that. Dear sir or madam or to whom it may concern is very outdated. It screams old fashioned. You don't want them dating you. So we'll avoid that as well. Dear hiring executive or dear hiring committee. It's very formal, but it is appropriate and it's okay. Dear hiring authority or dear HR director is also acceptable. If you know the name, it is always best to use the name, but how do you put it? So you'd start with dear. If all you have is a first initial, then just use that because that's all you have. If that's all you know, then you just use that. If you do know both the first and last name, and especially if you're not certain of the sex, then you would put just both the first and the last name. If you are sure of the sex, you could put dear Mr. Smith or dear Ms. Smith, but you would want to avoid Mrs. As far as the reference line is concerned, if you have in reference of the accountant one position job number one, two, three, four, you can omit a salutation. That is acceptable to do that then. The first paragraph is your introduction, of course. But do not include, hi, my name is. They can see your name at the top of the letter. It's a given. Before you start writing, do your research. Research the company, their values, corporate culture, and critical challenges. Do include your purpose for writing the letter. How you heard about the job. If you're applying for a job that you found on Indeed, consider checking the company's website to see if the job is posted there, and then mention looking at their company website. Why you're interested in the job. What is your unique connection or passion for the position and the organization? Make sure that the entire letter is written with the employer's needs in mind. Do not make your interest self-serving. Paragraph two, the body. You get to talk about you. You're gonna mention a couple of job qualifications that are not mentioned in the resume. Talk about your skills, what makes you a perfect fit. Align them to the business's needs. It's not necessary. But if there are skills and abilities that the job description mentions that you don't know how to do, mention that you're confident that you can learn how to do them. It's important that we tell the truth. So just leave it out if you're not confident. Mention the business and or their products and services in a positive light, of course. Think about how many job applications ask, why do you wanna work here? Tell them how awesome they are. Talk about qualifications that are not on your resume. Highlight significant parts of your resume that specifically relate to the position. It's important to remember that you do not want to simply reword your resume. This is an opportunity to say what didn't seem to fit in the resume. The focus should be on the employer. How would they benefit from bringing you on? The third paragraph, the conclusion, is going to button up the letter, so make it count. Although it's okay to refer to an enclosed or an attached resume, do that in an interesting and intriguing way. For instance, enclosed you will find my resume, will not make an employer want to read it, 
but saying, I have enclosed my resume with my detailed work history and special skills listed. Well, that makes me wonder how detailed is it and which skills are special? This is also a good place to offer up any special documents that you might have that they might be interested in. Something like, as a recent college graduate, you might be interested in my transcripts, or I'm happy to provide my OSHA certificate when needed. It's also a great place to give them the answers to questions that they might have. For instance, let them know that you can start right away. Assertively indicate your interest in the interview soon. And finally, don't forget to thank them for their time to read the letter and for a timely response. Here we have five phrases that you might consider including in your final paragraph of your cover letter. They'll help you to seal the deal for your next interview. We'll go over each one. I'm excited to learn more about this opportunity and share how I'll be a great fit for XYZ Corporation. Strong cover letter closings are enthusiastic and confident. You want the reader to get the impression that you are truly passionate about the position and working for their company. This statement will also illustrate your ability to fit into the company culture and how your personality and work ethic is exactly what they're looking for. The second statement, I believe this is a position where my passion for the industry will grow because of the opportunities that you provide for your employees. List something specific there. It's always a good idea to explain what you find attractive about working for the company and how you want to bring your passion to the table. By doing this, you can illustrate how much thought and dedication you put into applying for the position and how much you care about becoming a part of their company. The third statement, if I'm offered this position, I will be ready to hit the ground running and help XYZ company exceed its own expectations for success. By adding this piece to your conclusion, you will be able to add some flair and excitement to your cover letter. The reader will become intrigued by your enthusiasm to hit the ground running. Employers look for candidates who are prepared for the position and who are easy to train. Therefore, this phrase will definitely raise some curiosity and the reader will want to discover what you have to offer for their company. The next one, I would appreciate the opportunity to meet with you to discuss how my qualifications will be beneficial to your organization's success. Remember, you want to make it clear in your cover letter how the employer will benefit from your experience and qualifications. You want to also express how your goal is to help the organization succeed, not how the position will contribute to your own personal success. And the last one, I'll call you next Tuesday to follow up on my application and arrange for an interview. The most essential part of your closing is your call to action statement. Remember the purpose of your cover letter is to land an interview. Don't end your cover letter saying that you hope they'll get in touch. Explain to the reader the exact day and how you will be contacting them. When you state that you will be following up with an employer, make sure that you do it. Although it's great to say that you're eager to tell them how you can help them, you need to also be prepared to have that conversation when you're called upon. Your closing. Assertively ask for an interview. There are three communication styles, passive, assertive, and aggressive. Do not use an aggressive style. That's egotistical, self-serving, and it's not thinking of others. Choose assertive. Be direct, set expectations, but with respect. And don't forget to thank them for their timely response. Use a complimentary closing like sincerely or respectfully. Make sure you keep it professional. And be, br be brief. Mention your plan to follow up. Reiterate what's the best way to get a hold of you. Each of the following formats utilize the structure that we just covered. 
Your options will include paragraph, bullet point, make the match, and T format. You'll find the difference is the way that you structure the body of your letter, so the second paragraph. Let's go over each of these cover letter formats. You will find a document in the helpful document section of the course for each of these formats. They include comments in the margin section of the page that give specific instructions on the letter writing itself and on each section. Each of the following slides are the same except for the body and the way the information is presented. Take a look at each of these examples and decide which speaks to you and which you think would be most effective for the job that you're applying for today. Each option includes a similar heading and greeting, introduction, conclusion, and assertive closing. The paragraph format is just that. In the second paragraph of your cover letter, you will communicate your unique qualifications, aligning them with the job description in a well-written paragraph. You can see the second paragraph here says, explain why you're interested in working for this employer and specify how you fit this position. Don't repeat the information on your resume. Include something special or unique about yourself that will benefit the employer. Remember, the reader will consider this an example of your writing skills. Discuss how your skills, experience, educational background, accomplishments, and personal characteristics match the requirements of the job. Let the employer know how those qualifications will benefit them. The bulleted version lists your qualifications in a way that highlights that you're the perfect fit. Each bullet will specify a relevant skill, qualification, or experience. As we say here, the first sentence is just going to introduce the bulleted list of skills that make you the perfect fit. Then you'll list each qualification separately. As the second bullet here lists, you might choose to highlight the fact that you're a recent graduate and you have applied knowledge to pair with your experience. You could mention qualifications not mentioned in your resume that align with those mentioned in the job description. Make the match format option does just that. You'll list three or four requirements listed in the job description, and then you'll tell them how you fit that bill. You'll list first requirement right out of the job description, and then explain how your education and or experience have prepared you to ideally meet this requirement. You'll list the second qualification and give a detailed example of what makes you qualified to meet their need. And you'll list a third expectation, maybe even a fourth, and consider using the STAR interview method, you can sure just Google that, to tell them what you've done, what your role was, and what actions you took, and then the result. Similar to the Make the Match option, the T format directly aligns the employer's requirements or needs with your qualifications. However, with the T format, you use a table rather than an introductory sentence and a list of items. So here we have the same information from the last letter, but you can see that on the left side we have a requirement, on the right side you list your qualification, and it just shows a direct correlation. Here are a few examples of cover letters. You'll find a document with eight different examples in the helpful document section of the course. Feel free to look those over and steal some verbiage that seems to align with your needs. Let's take a moment to look at each issue on this bad example of a cover letter. Missing contact information. You'll notice here that they don't have a phone number or an email address. Consider how they're going to want to get a hold of you. Are they likely to want your street address or are they more likely to want your email and your phone number? 
They used a canned greeting here to whom it may concern. Don't use a canned greeting. Make sure that you're always addressing it to uh, their name is best, but hiring manager or hiring team or something like that at the very least. We want to customize the letter to the job. Here they have, I've enclosed my resume to apply for the job at your company, the job at your company. We want to customize that. Mention the specific job title and the company name. We want only relevant information. We have here, you will see from my resume that although I didn't graduate, I did which they spelled wrong. I did take several classes in underwater basket weaving. I held a, about a 2.5 GPA. We don't want to mention anything that's not relevant. So that would be your underwater basket weaving probably. And don't mention a GPA unless it is impressive. And that would be 3.5 or higher. And that spell check, check and recheck for grammar and spelling errors. And don't use any contractions in your cover letter. Don't put can't right out, cannot. And do your research. Here we have, I haven't been to any of your stores yet and I know I'm not tailor-made for the job, but I'm really motivated to find a new job. <laughs> so do your research, make it seem like you know and you like the company. Assertively ask for an interview. They have call me at your earliest convenience. We don't want to mention ASAP or at your convenience. We want to be assertive about that and ask them, tell them when you're going to follow up. And focus on the positives, no negativity. There's two points here that are negative that I don't particularly like this type of work and I know I'm not tailor made. We just want to stick to the positives. As far as length is concerned, 250 to 400 words is about right. And that, by the way, is about a page. If your cover letter seems very wordy and daunting, try to use bullet points to break up that second paragraph and make it easier to read. Some white space is good, but you don't want too much white space. You don't want too much blank space on your page. We're going to list the five biggest mistakes made in cover letters. This list should probably include or even start with typos and spelling and grammar errors, but we don't even mention it here. Let's just assume that that's a given. First mistake, address line. Yours needs to include the phone number and the email address. Theirs needs to have the right address and be addressed to the right person, the hiring person. Don't focus on your needs, telling the company what they can do for you. That's not what the employer needs to know. Restating your resume. Do not regurgitate your resume. They have that document. They will be bored as they read one of those. Additionally, don't restate the same thing over and over trying to fill space on the page either. It's okay to use personal pronouns, but look over your completed cover letter and check to see how many of those sentences start with I. It's pretty easy to reword them so that there are just a few. I like to write a cover letter first, then go back and circle all the sentences that start with I and rewrite those. Although we want to make an employer's life easier, we want to be insistent that they ask for a personal interview. Use a word that lets them know that you expect a call soon, not at the earliest convenience. This good example is pretty self-explanatory. It looks neat and orderly. It includes full address information the hiring manager's name. It includes the applicant's interest in the job. I'm writing to apply for the job as a flooring consultant. I pride myself as a very effective salesperson. The skills that they have are applicable. It clearly indicates their interest. 
and the letter ends with a thank you and a call to action. Thank you for considering my application. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Personal branding sets you apart from the rest of the applicants. You will use a personal story to align your specific skills and experience to the employer's needs. A cover letter is a perfect place to showcase your brand. Your personal brand will show you are a person. Remember, employers hire people, not GPAs. These examples might help you to get the creativity flowing. At age 12, I was helping our Montana cattle ranch. At age 17, I was captain of my high school football team. And at 19, I was a Marine fighting in Iraq. I know what leadership, teamwork, and dedication to a job is. And I bring that commitment every day to every task I'm assigned and will bring it to the role of whatever. Dr. Smith, are you looking for a nurse who can do more than take a temperature, dry a tear, and give a shot? Do you need an RN who can help your practice run smoothly, a professional with 10 years experience in pediatric nursing? Creating exciting, realistic 3D environments is what I do. Whether working on corporate projects for Nintendo, visualizing airport terminals of the future for Activision or creating museum quality streetscapes for Atari. I offer solid artistic vision complemented by technical knowledge and project management skills to deliver high quality gaming animation. So what's your story? If you're looking to stand out, Headlines are another great way to draw attention to a specific quality or a trait. Use a quote to speak to your values. Align to the business's values as well. You can use a title or a tagline reminding them of your specific skills or a career statement to clearly identify your focus. So just to recap, type a professional one page cover letter in business letter format. Research the employer, target the job you want and talk yourself up. Include the hiring manager's name and address. Use the body of your cover letter to align your skills and abilities directly with the employer's needs. Close your letter in a powerful way and assertively ask for an interview. And reread, reproof, and re spell check. Tune in to the next presentation, Cover Letter Creation, to walk through each step of the creation process, step by step, using Microsoft Word. And if you have any questions, Call your local job service. We are here to help. We can schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you. We can help you create a cover letter from scratch or simply review your cover letter for possible edits and modifications that might make you more likely to land an interview. We're here for you. Give us a call. Or you can go to montanaworks.gov, click on Find Job Service Office link, and choose the office nearest you you'll be redirected to a page with the phone number, address, and office hours. Thank you so much for reviewing today's presentation.